What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to get GameCube and Wii games up and running on your Android device, be it an Android phone, Android tablet, or even an Android TV. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using my Samsung Galaxy Tab S4, and this contains a Snapdragon 835 CPU with 4GB of RAM, and it performs really well with GameCube games. Speaking of the specs of the tablet that I'm using here, this is not going to perform well on a $50 prepaid Android phone. You're going to need a high-end phone to run GameCube and Wii games at full speed on your device. I've personally tested dozens of devices, and I find that anything from the Snapdragon 710 on up to the Snapdragon 855 work really well. Ideally, you're going to want a Snapdragon 835, 845, 855, or even the upcoming 865. And if we're talking about Android TVs, the only Android TV device that I've ever been able to get GameCube to run at full speed on is the NVIDIA Shield Android TV. I'll leave some links in the description to some of my favorite devices in case you want to pick one up. So for GameCube and Wii games, we're going to be using the Dolphin emulator, and we're not going to be downloading it from the Google Play Store because that's kind of out of date right now. As of making this video, there have been over 200 updates to Dolphin that are not applied to the Google Play Store version. So you're going to be getting an older version downloading it from the Play Store. So first things first, you're going to need some GameCube or Wii games, and unfortunately I can't tell you exactly where to get them. You can rip them yourself or you can do a quick Google search. They're out there. So what I've done is transferred some GameCube games from my PC to my Android device here. I've downloaded CX File Explorer. I can go right in here to my downloads. I created a folder called GameCube Games just for easy access and I know exactly where they are. I'm going to be focusing on GameCube here. Got a few games to test out. If you don't have a PC to transfer games from, you can always download them directly on your device. The next thing we're going to need to do is install the Dolphin emulator. Like I mentioned, we're not going to be using the Google Play version. You could get it from right here, but if we take a look at the version that's available as of making this video, it's 5.0.10411. So it's a little older. If we go to the official Dolphin website, I'll leave a link in the description. The newest version here is 10607, so we're much higher, over 200 updates. I'm going to download the Android version right here. We're going to need to allow Chrome to download files, so we'll click continue, allow, it's downloading here, we're going to click open, and now since I'm on Android 9.0, each app needs permission to install apps from unknown sources, it's going to prompt us here. I'll click settings, allow from this source, we'll back up and install the emulator. So we now have the emulator installed, we can launch it. We're going to allow the Dolphin emulator to access our storage. And the very first thing we need to do is tell Dolphin where our games are located on our device. So we're going to go to this little plus symbol, mine are in my downloads folder and another folder called GameCube Games. I'm going to choose this folder and select this directory. It's going to populate, download all of our box art. Okay, so there's still a little more setup to do to get the maximum performance out of your device. We're going to head up to this little icon here, Config. From General, we just want to make sure that CPU Core JIT ARM 64 Recompiler is chosen. Dual core needs to be checked and it should be right out of the box. And in here with my Snapdragon 835 all the way up to the 855, this is the only settings I change in this area. We also need to deal with some settings under the graphics here. So our video backend is preset to OpenGL. You can change this to Vulkan. Now, if you're running Super Mario Sunshine, I find that OpenGL works much better, and this might be the case with certain games. But most of the time, on these newer devices, I choose Vulkan. I do want to show my FPS so I know how fast it's running. Moving down a little bit, compile shaders before starting. Now, when you're running the Dolphin emulator on Android, Linux, or a Windows PC, it works on shader cache. So when you first start a game running the Dolphin emulator, there's absolutely no shader cache for that game. It has to build it as you play the game, and this can cause some slowdowns in certain spots of the game, because it has to cache those shaders. Once you play through a level of the game, it's going to cache the shaders from, let's say, that level. If there's new shaders that haven't been cached yet on the second level, you still might get some hiccups. 
but I always choose compile shaders before starting, so next time I start the game up, it's going to compile those shaders that I've already cached by playing that game and allow me to have a smoother experience. So I definitely recommend turning this on, but starting up your game may take a little longer because it has to compile them before the game starts. It's definitely worth the wait. We're going to go down a little bit to Enhancements. You can change the internal resolution, and it really depends on what kind of device you're running. I'm able to run these at 2x, but I usually just leave it at 1. Looks pretty decent like that. And finally, back in multi-threading. Now this only works for Vulkan, and you can leave this on at all times. It's not going to affect the OpenGL performance, and most of the time, like I said, we're using Vulkan here. Basically, I've noticed on these newer devices that support Vulkan that this actually helps out a lot in certain games. To save all these settings, we're going to click Save and Exit. And that's literally the only settings that I change on my devices. Now there are other settings that may affect performance or help out performance, but if you're on a low-end phone, none of these settings are going to help you run these games at full speed. You need a powerful CPU and a powerful GPU to run GameCube and Wii games on an Android device. The last thing I want to talk about before we get into some gameplay is setting up a controller. Now I have an Xbox One S controller with Bluetooth connected to my tablet now. And I want to set it up as my GameCube controller. So I'm going to go to this controller icon, GameCube input, GameCube controller 1, choose emulated, and it'll bring up a setup screen. So if we tap A, we're going to push A on the controller. B, B, X, Y, Z, and so on and so on. Your control stick's going to be your left analog stick. Your C stick's going to be your right analog stick. When you're finished, click Save and Exit. So we now have a controller set up so we can play with a controller on our Android device. Now the touchscreen controls are going to show up in case you don't have a controller. So we'll start Soul Calibur 2. As you can see, it has touchscreen controls, but since I'm using a controller, I really don't need these. So I can go up here to these three dots, configure controls, toggle controls, and I want to turn all of these off because I'm using an external controller. I find that the toggle all button just doesn't work well. And now we have absolutely nothing on screen and I can use my controller to play my favorite games. So I've already played through the first round so I could cache the shaders and there was some glitching going on and you'll still hear it in the sound with this game. So even on a $400, $500, or $600 tablet, you're still going to get some lag with the Dolphin emulator. That's why I say you really need a high-end device to play these games properly. Or if you really want to use the Dolphin emulator to its full potential, install it on your PC and run it in Windows. To exit the game you're currently playing, just swipe up on your screen and tap back twice. It'll bring us back into the Dolphin emulator menu, and then we can start a different game. I'll just go with Mario Kart and I'll get right into some gameplay. So basically, that's it, but there's one last thing I want to show you. Now, save states do work in the Dolphin emulator for Android, and you can always save your game inside of the game you're playing. But if you want to have save states and load states, you can enable them from within the settings. But there is a catch. If you ever update the Dolphin emulator on Android, your save states may not work with the newest version. I know a lot of people are still going to want to use save states, so I'll show you how to enable them right now. We're going to go up to Config, General. We're going to scroll down until we find Enable Save States, and it gives us a little warning here. Save states may not be compatible with future versions of Dolphin. We're going to make sure that's checked. We'll back up. And if you want to save from within a game, we can get five slots. So I just started Soul Calibur 2. I'm going to swipe down from the top. We're going to tap on more options. And from here, save state. So we have five slots. I'm going to save in the first slot. And if you want to load, load state. Choose the slot you saved in. So I've saved in slot one just reloaded my game for me. 
But remember, the save states may not work on future versions of Dolphin, so you got to keep that in mind. The best way to go about this is just save inside of the game like you would on the original console. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'm also going to leave a link to the official Dolphin website where you can download the latest APK if you don't want to use the one from Google Play. It'd also be really cool if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel, but like always, thanks for watching.